I'm uh, joined with my co-host Stu Miniman, analyst at wikibon.org, and our next guest is uh, Glenn Laxdahl from Ericsson. Welcome to theCUBE. Good to be here, thank you. Okay, so uh, Stu, we were talking with Mike uh, earlier about service providers, data centers, data centers are trying to be more like service providers, and service providers are trying to be more like data centers, all this kind of colliding together around essentially software-defined infrastructure. Uh, Stu, what, what do you think the, the <coughs> uh, brocade opportunity is for service providers? So, so John, uh, actually this segment we're going to talk a little bit about partners. Uh, is, uh, so Ericsson's a partner of, uh, of Brocade. Uh, Glenn, understand uh, you guys are involved in uh, kind of software-defined networks and some of the open flow, open stack discussions. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Brocade partnership? Well, let's just step back and talk a little bit about the importance of cloud uh, to uh, to us, and then we can move forward to the uh, to the brocade. Okay, we're allowed to still use cloud. I thought software-defined data center is uh, kind of <laughs> taking over <laughs> taking over the term. Cloud's there. dead, or, right? Uh, I mean, you know, back in the day, I called it the next generation virtual data center. <laughs> but, uh, but but, but How, however we characterize it, I think that the uh, um, you know the 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 that the, uh, the reality is that the amount of data that's going to be hitting both mobile networks and fixed networks is going to be growing at a dramatic pace over the next five years. We project. Uh, in uh, some recent analysis that we've just completed and published that the, um, uh, the data traffic hitting mobile networks is going to increase by a factor of 15 times over the next five years. And so networks are going to have to evolve uh, very rapidly in order to deal with that. And I think that that uh, uh, subject was discussed in the presentations this morning. Um, and so what, what we want to do is work with our service provider customers uh, to help evolve those networks as rapidly as possible. And um, and, and aggressively moving forward with the new architectures that are going to be required to deal with that traffic is going to be a, an important part of that, which includes, uh, which includes the cloud, uh, and as an aspect of the cloud, uh, which ultimately includes a moving in the direction of software-defined networks, which is um, uh, allowing us to, uh, number one, uh, 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 distribute the, um, uh, the, the network and the cloud uh, as close to the edge of the network as possible, and as you're distributing the cloud to the edge of the network, you need a, uh, a, an ability to manage that, and a, an orchestration layer that allows you to manage that. And we think that there is um, a lot of value um, in uh, providing that orchestration layer, that management layer, on top of the uh, distributed telco cloud. And the importance of distributing the telco cloud is going to be to enable uh, the network to deal with the uh, explosion of traffic growth that, that is happening now and will continue to happen over the next several years. Okay, so could you kind of uh, connect the dots for us? How does Ethernet, you know, fabrics from Brocade, you know, fit into the, the overall solution? Well, I think the partnership between Brocade and, and Ericsson is that we're both technology providers and that we're both, uh, you know, that we both deal in the network space. We don't uh, uh, compete. We're uh, we, we collaborate and we're working on um, some uh, collaborative technologies uh, today um, uh, that, uh, that, that, we're, that we're in partnership on. Um, and we come from the network side and the telco side. Uh, Brocade comes uh, from the ethernet side. Um, but as these worlds collide in the data center and, uh, and in the cloud, there's the natural opportunity for collaboration between a company like Brocade and a company like Ericsson. Okay, so, so Glenn, I'm wondering if you could help us kind of squint through some of the trends. So, you know, I just go back a couple of years, cloud was kind of a general term. We said a lot of enterprises are really transforming into a, a private cloud. Service providers obviously are providing services, and uh, many customers are doing hybrid clouds. You know, what, what's your take on hybrid clouds? Is there federation between the clouds, or is it some applications live off-site and some live on-site? No, I think that there's, uh, I think if, if you want to use the term hybrid cloud, I think that's the that's the direction that uh, that 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 we're going to be going. Uh, that these network the the uh, the new network of the future is going to coexist with the existing network, um, and that um, as uh, these networks begin to uh, to to uh, to move to the cloud, as applications that are running on top of those networks moves to the cloud. Uh, what we're going to find is that the cloud, there won't be a single instance of the cloud, but multiple instances of the cloud, both in the data center and then towards the edge of the network. Right. Um, and some applications are going to nicely reside uh, or are better delivered from the, from the network edge, from the very network edge, and some of those applications better reside uh, back in the data center, and I think that there is a requirement to, uh, to manage uh, the flow of those applications from the data center out to the network edge 
um, uh, and you know, and, and 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 the management of that, I think, is going to is going to be uh, where a significant amount of the value is. Yeah, absolutely. We need to be able to manage between the two. I guess the, the question I have is, are you seeing cloud bursting? Are you actually seeing applications that are, you know, kind of spiking up into, uh, you know, the, the service provider environments when they need the capacity, or is it really more of a, I have my stuff and I have the stuff that's offsite and I'm managing together. No, I think that the, in the network of the future that we are uh, uh, creating uh, with our service provider customers, it's more to, it really is uh, purpose built to deal with the cloud bursting, to deal with um, uh, you know, enormous bursts of bandwidth requirement uh, wherever those might happen in the network. And uh, you know, we, we see a world where uh, more and more computing is going to be moving to mobile endpoints, where uh, smartphone penetration uh, today is 50% in North America, growing to 80 to 90% over the next four to five years. Smartphone penetration in the rest of the world is 30%, you know, growing to that same 70 to 80% over the next five years. Uh, uh, these smartphones are becoming more and more powerful computing endpoints, and they are capable of generating tremendous amounts of traffic instantaneously. Uh, and so as, as applications uh, are delivered more and more to these mobile endpoints, the, uh, the, uh, the challenge is for the network to be able to scale to meet the needs of those uh, mobile computing endpoints wherever they might be. So, so Glenn, uh, you know, bandwidth and scalability are important, but if you talk about modern applications, you know, latency is, is really one of the critical components. You know, when I use Siri, uh, it needs to be able to answer me immediately. Uh, you know, customers are deploying Flash to really help them you know, have applications that have you know, immediate response time. There, there's still the speed of light between you know, where I am, my mobile device, my, my, and my data. You know, what are you seeing to kind of overcome distance a, as a consideration as, as service providers roll out these solutions. Yeah, and I'll also add uh, you know, something as fundamental as voice over IP over uh, LTE. Uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the wireless networks are, are now being upgraded for uh, 4G or LTE, and uh, soon we're going to be adding voice uh, onto those uh, LTE networks, and voice is also an application uh, that requires uh, very low latency and very uh, high performance. And I think that uh, in our view, uh, the way the network is going to evolve to deliver those low latency, high performance uh, application requirements is moving uh, uh, that application uh, as close to the edge of the network as possible. Be, uh, by, you know, it, it could be uh, 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 from the base station uh, out, to the, um, out to the handset. But the closer that that uh, uh, application, uh, it resides to the edge of the network, we can deliver higher and higher performance of that application, in, in particular with respect to latency. Okay, um, can you give us your view on, on, on OpenStack? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of immaturity still in the solution. Uh, you know, cer certain companies have uh, implementations of OpenStack that, that, that they are deploying in production environments, you know, the rack spaces of the world. Um, but you, know, you guys are you know, working on OpenStack, Give us a view, where are we today, and what needs to be done to kind of move that forward? You know, I think we're working with, with, uh, with OpenStack as, as one of, of, uh, of a few other uh, uh, technologies. Uh, we're uh, certainly um, uh, working in that direction, testing it out, um, but I wouldn't want to comment any further. Okay. Well, it's an emerging area. I mean, we we've been following OpenStack. We think it's, it's played in different roles of kind of like a marketing tactic. Hey, I got some cloud, join OpenStack. Uh, and then the public cloud shift that we saw private and hybrid cloud, and then we saw a lot of SDN kind of activity going on in the developer, basically a developer environment. So, you know, we're watching it, it's gotten a little bit more traction relative to actually having some more meat on the bone than fluffy kind of like mm -hmm. a industry standard organization. So, so we're watching that. But that brings my question around the ecosystem around this new network virtualization trend where you got software-led infrastructures evolving, server, compute storage. We've documented the, the the rise of storage as, as front and center with flash and low latency infrastructure. But now you got, now change is going on in the ecosystem from delivery side of it, orchestration you mentioned, and developers. So can you just share your observations in those two areas? How is this new era of data center and, and, and technology like what Brocade's introducing impacting the delivery side of the services business, um, you know, service provide, not service providers, but like consultants. We're seeing boutiques pop up, we're seeing new value chains that are threatening and disrupting the old, you know, incumbent money-making uh, essentials of the world, um, which are still doing orchestration, Capgemini and those guys, so we're seeing a new breed of service providers, and obviously on the developer side, we're seeing actually really geeks developing some stuff. So can you comment on your observations on those two areas? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, two, two ways. One, we, we want to uh, um, um, uh, enable the service providers to uh, much more quickly and much more rapidly allocate bandwidth uh, to wherever it's needed in the network. Um, very dynamically allocate bandwidth to wherever it's needed in the network. We see uh, cloud enabling that, and we see you know, potentially um, Ethernet fabrics uh, playing into that as well. Um, uh, facilitating uh, the more uh, instantaneous provisioning of network bandwidth or uh, instantiations of the cloud uh, wherever it's wherever it's required. The second way is um, exposing uh, APIs off of the network to bring in third-party uh, enterprise developers to develop applications which take advantage of the capabilities that are uh, that are in the network and. Um, um, so the rapid provisioning of, of bandwidth and the uh, opportunity to expose APIs to enable third-party uh, enterprise developers to come in and develop purpose-built applications which, which take advantage of uh, the network layer um, are two examples that I would give. So you know, obviously with developers it's always kind of a catch-22. You want developers to develop stuff but also opens up security issues, right? So obviously with networking, bounding security in the platform has always been a key part of the strategy, whether it's in, on chipsets or within other mechanisms. So as it's become more developer-friendly networking and with virtualization, are you seeing any uh, trends around where to bound the security and how that's playing into the data protection side of the business? Well, I think security is going to be fundamental for us, uh, for a, uh, I mean that's 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 job one uh, as far as as far as we're concerned. Uh, so the uh, the networks of today are uh, purpose built and highly secure. And as we evolve those networks to more to deal with the reality of the traffic flow uh, that that is is going to happen and and move in the direction of the cloud, uh, we need to treat security as job one. Uh, so it will become the most important. Of the uh, of the factors that we're dealing with as we evolve to the network of the future. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of table stakes requirements. We saw GoDaddy uh, get breached last week, and Absolutely. so like, you know, cloud is nice. Um, so we're seeing people, you know, multi-tenancy, another huge, complex, both from a tech and security, and also compliance. Mm -hmm. um, so, how so is compliance? <laughs> One of the things Mike Clayco, which I was talking about, was you know you got a compliance nightmare. You can fight it or embrace it and fix it and resolve around it. What's your view on that? that Compliance respect? with respect to? Just overall you know, rules and regulations around security, networking, um, uh, keep in mind and, and everything else like that. Oh, so okay, now I understand. No, yeah. I mean, keep in mind that our, our customer base is, is our service providers. Yep. It's uh, uh, AT&T and Verizon and Sprint and T-Mobile and, uh, you know, and uh, the service provider uh, customers. And so um, the, the, the compliance to uh, requirements like uh, security, low latency, high performance, uh, it is absolutely critical. Uh, the network is their business, and therefore, um, as we transition that network and evolve that network to introduce some of these new capabilities that we're talking about today, uh, the security, the low latency, the high performance becomes fundamental to that. It's not uh, something that is uh, one of several criteria that we're looking at, it's the most important criteria that we're looking at. So, Glenn, Glenn, last question I have for you is around orchestration. You know, we talked about management and the different pieces. You know, is, is every service provider kind of, you know, creating their own, or you know, are there some technologies or some areas that, that you're starting to see uh, pick up in the industry? I think the orchestration uh, is something that, uh, no, no, I don't expect that everybody's going to be creating their own. I think that, uh, uh, that we're, we're going to be evolving towards uh, uh, not only standards with respect to orchestration, but there is going to be a lot of value in the orchestration layer. Um, okay. for the reasons any of the any of the new startups or any of the big players that you're seeing getting traction out there today? Uh, you know, uh, there there are some. I don't want to comment on names, but I think there are some early uh, uh, signs that um, of of where it's going. My final question is: share with the folks out there that that are looking under the hood here around brocade and just infrastructure, because this is stuff powering mobile. And uh, the consumer stuff's great, obviously iPhone 5's out today, and it's all the rage, uh, we covered that earlier. But just share with the folks, just give some insight into the magnitude of what's going on in the mobile world relative to the explosiveness of the growth and what that's causing and the underpinnings, just from your experience, you know, your perspective. I mean, you got a front row seat to all this, right? So I mean. You know, LTE is now on the iPhone 5. We, were, you know, we were talking about that earlier. I mean, it's just, just awesome innovation. I mean, the end user side of the business, and now on the enterprise, bring your own device to work. Massive amounts of applications being provisioned. All this new action. So, share with the folks your insight around the mobile. What's 
And where's the pressure points? What's the action look like? What's the <laughs> how massive of a uh, of explosive well, change I mean, is it's, it? It's 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 to it's totally massive. Uh, you know, you you just uh, the uh, the pace of uh, of innovation that has gone on in the smartphone uh, industry over the last three years has been absolutely unprecedented. Uh, where we're as we head into 2013, we're you know dealing with devices that will commonly have 1.5 to 2 gigahertz dual core and quad core processors in those devices equivalent to you know desktop computing today um, and in terms of the numbers as i said before we're 50% penetrated in north america right now on smartphones that's going to uh, 80 to 90% over the next 5 years uh, similarly on the tablet side as as computing is moving from the desktop to a combination of tablets and smartphones the change that that's driving is just absolutely dramatic, and the networks are going to uh, are going to evolve uh, at an accelerating pace to deal with that tremendous amount of of, of traffic. And then on the application side, applications are now um, uh, uh, be, uh, evolving and evolving very rapidly to be delivered to mobile endpoints, uh, both smartphone and tablet uh, endpoints. And we want to participate in that. We want to participate in a big way in that. Glenn Lex, Erickson, thanks for that perspective. Massive explosion happening, we're all seeing it around us, but under the hood, it's affecting the infrastructure, great opportunity in the networking area, evolution, opportunities for entrepreneurs and companies to participate in that and push that uh, forward and change our lives for the better, we hope, um, and uh, we surely will, obviously new things at the scene. Uh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, this is SiliconAngle.tv coverage of the Brocade Analyst Day. Now we are going to go uh, live to an interview already in progress in Las Vegas for Silicon Angle's continuous coverage in Las Vegas of Splunk's developer conference. And uh, we're going to have Jeff Kelly uh, with Wikibon and Jeff Frick of Silicon Angle uh, with Lena Yoshi and Matthew Culver. So we're going to go take a break here and we're going to go live and switch to the action in Las Vegas for SiliconAngle.tv's extensive coverage. We will go out to the events to extract the signal from the noise and bring that to you. So uh, stay tuned here at Brocade, and we're going to go to Las Vegas right now. <laughs>